Hello and welcome to my first ever YouTube video for HD Music Promotion UK. On today's video I thought that I would do my top 10 tips for artists who are applying to blogs. Every day I get approached by a lot of artists asking me to feature them on my blog and so I thought that this may help them uh, for when they're submitting their music to my blog and other blogs. Um, so let's get into it. Number one, always read the submission guidelines. I have my own set of guidelines on my blog and nine times out of ten those have clearly been ignored when I receive submissions. I feel like that's something that's really really important to do because it provides them with all the information that they need to feature you and it makes them a lot more likely to feature you because of it. Number two is something that's really important to me, don't do group emails. If I see that you've sent it to loads of people, if I can see that you blind carbon copied me into the email, um, if it says undisclosed recipients underneath, I know for sure that you've sent that email to at least probably like 20, maybe 30, 100 perhaps other people. If you want promotion, it's important that you do them one by one. It will take you a lot more time, but in the long run, it will be worth it. So definitely consider doing that. Number three is make sure that you're always friendly and approachable. If you know what the blogger is called, like I am called Hannah, hopefully you know that by now, but if you didn't then there you go. Put my name, their name at the top, or if you don't maybe just put the blog or um, the name of the website or whatever it is at the top, uh, just so that they know it is a personalised email. Make sure also the bed of the email, like the copy, whatever you want to call it, make sure that you've tailored that to suit the blog. Um, if you put their name at the top, but then later on in the email it says something like you all, then I know again that you just copy and pasted it and not actually like read through, you just changed the name. But definitely being friendly and approachable is a great way to start a conversation, especially with someone that you don't know. And you know, I'm always up for connecting with new people, so definitely if you get the conversation going, then I'm hopefully I'm going to reply. Number four is to always make sure you do your research, um, read the blog. Make sure that in your email you mention perhaps the style of music that they feature, the genre, um, perhaps some other artists that they've featured in the past, because that shows that you've done, like say you've done your research, you've given time to reading that blog, and if you've given time to them, they're likely to reciprocate and give time to you. So definitely consider doing that when it comes to applying to blogs. Also, it does help you if you know if you're a metal artist you're not going to apply to a folk blog. A lot of people, they they perhaps don't just, they don't really consider um, the niche of the blog. Like for me, my niche is, it's nothing to do with genre, it's simply that if you're unsigned or have a small record deal, so you're upcoming, I am very likely to consider you. So yeah, just make sure that you're reading the genre and so on of, of the blog because that really will help you when it comes to getting featured. Number five is to always make sure that you proofread your emails or your messages and so on um, and to ensure that there's good spelling, grammar and punctuation. Now being an English student, having done a degree for nearly three years now and even prior to that, I really really pride myself on spelling, grammar and punctuation and I hate it when I make a mistake. But a lot of people and a lot of emails I get, it's obvious that they haven't really checked their emails. You know, you don't have to be really, really formal or anything, or there's no need to be getting your theor theosaurus out, but just make sure that you proofread it or someone else proofreads it. Make sure that it reads and flows well. Make sure the other person is going to be able to understand it, that your English is, you know, to a fairly decent standard. Because if I can't understand your email or if you say something like, hey mate, at the beginning I'm going to be a bit like, oh no, you know, I do think that, that is something that is really, really important and I think a lot of people would agree with me. So make sure that you do it and you do it well because that will really, really help you, especially when you're, promote when you're approaching me. So yeah, number six is, if possible, it's not entirely essential, but if possible, get a professional to write your press release or, your, uh, or put together for you an electronic press kit, uh, the EPK. Um, like I say, it's not entirely essential, but it's def definitely desirable because I can usually tell if a professional has written something or if the artist has written something themselves. And certainly it helps me if you have all the correct information, it's written in, again, good English. Um, it promotes you in a nice way and it can basically form the basis of my feature. So that is a really, really good place to start if your budget will stretch that far. 
and don't feel like it's going to be a waste of money because it won't be, it will help you in the short term and definitely in the long term. Number seven is I really struggle to make people understand that they can't get everything in the music industry for free and I think some people might think this is almost quite a patronising point but I definitely feel like artists, they, they contact me and after having spent hundreds probably, you know, hundreds of dollars, hundreds of pounds or whatever it might be, um, perhaps on writing, or not writing, but they may have written a song, they've spent a lot of money recording it, and then they don't seem to even want to budge even slightly on maybe spending some money on promotion and marketing. I think that's something that's so important. You don't, you wouldn't spend, it's like you wouldn't spend hundreds of thousands of pounds on a car and then never drive it, would you? Unless you were just too scared of crashing it, because that would probably be me. If you spend hundreds on recording something, make sure that you then spend the necessary amount to get it promoted, to get it exposure and get it out there. So essentially, if I do ask you for a donation or something, it's not because I, you know, I'm trying to just grab money from you and that's all I want. It is because I am essentially offering a service. And if you're not getting promotion anywhere else, then why wouldn't you just sort of say, okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of money from my budget aside, because you should obviously be budgeting for this. Um, and at least then you're gonna get some exposure, which is a lot better in my opinion than none. And it may help your EP or album sales. It may help you get more attention from some in industry contacts, something like that. So I definitely feel like that's a good, good idea. Point A is something that I've noticed that a lot of people don't do except for PR professionals, which is to follow up your emails a week later. If you've taken the time to put an email together and you've written it really, really well, and you know, you're proud of what you're releasing or you're proud of what the band is doing or whatever it may be, make sure that you send a follow-up email perhaps five days to a week later. And you know, you don't need to rewrite the whole email again. Just go into your set box and click forward, put my email or whoever it is, put their email again and just give a nice little follow-up message. And you know, you never know, that might result in something. Perhaps they missed it. I get a lot of submissions. Sometimes I don't have time to reply to them and it also would show me that you are really, really, it doesn't mean you're desperate, it just means that you're keen to get onto my website. That'd be something that's quite good for me. So I think that that's, that that's nice, definitely, if you do that. And it shows that blog that you are really committed to getting a feature on there. Number nine, share and interact with the blog. So make sure you're following them on social media, make sure you're sharing their articles and you, are showing that you enjoy what they write about. It really, really helps. It will show that you're in their mentions. And then when they get an email, they'll sort of think to themselves, oh yeah, I remember connecting with that person on social media. Whereas sometimes I get emails from people completely out of the blue and I have no idea how they've come across me. They don't even tell me that. So it does mean that I sort of think, oh, if I do this feature for you and start promoting it across social media, how do I know that you're not then just gonna walk away from it and not share it or anything? If you share my content, I'm much more likely to share your content or your material than feature you. Number 10, make sure you strike the balance between selling yourself too short and selling yourself too hard. And by that, I mean promote yourself, make sure you're sounding good, uh, make sure you're not sort of dithering and that you're hesitant over the music you've produced. But at the same time, don't like put all these adjectives, you know, flying around. This isn't year six literacy class. Just make sure you are promoting yourself to the right level and that you're sounding good. Because if you are enthusiastic about your material and what you've produced and you're 100% behind it, then I'm more likely to get behind it because you're believing in yourself and I'm more likely to believe in you. That was my top 10 tips for artists who are approaching music blogs. I hope that it helped you. If you are an artist or you are a band or you manage a band or something, I hope that you'll consider using these tips in the future. If you do have any suggestions for future videos that you'd like me to do, please drop a comment below. If you could give this video a like or a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, there will be more in the future, so I'd really, really appreciate that. Um, like I say, I hope it did help and I look forward to doing more for you in the future. Also, I forgot to mention that we did recently relaunch on hdmusicpromotionuk.co.uk so if you'd like to head over to the blog or the website and check it out, that would be brilliant. Um, if you do have any music submissions, then please email me at hdmusicpromouk at gmail.com um, and that's all for now. So thank you for watching and I'll speak to you all soon.